Chapter 46 The Search Begins Look, Rama, at this Vanara army, said Sugriva. All these myriads of wondrous strength are yours to command. They are willing and able to do you all the service you demand. Consider this huge army as your own and bid them to do whatever you wish. Rama, beside himself with joy, embraced Sugriva. He said, first we should find out whether Sita is alive and if so, where she is. Next we should know Ravana's whereabouts. Then we shall do what needs to be done. But it is for you, not for me or Lakshmana, to command this army. You are their king. Besides, you know best what needs to be done and how to do it. Blessed am I to have a friend like you and a brother like Lakshmana. Then Sugriva issued stringent orders to his commanders at once to send divisions of the army to the four quarters of the earth to make a thorough search for Sita. After sending away the other leaders, Sugriva took Hanuman aside and told him, Son of Vayu, possessing the strength and splendor of your father, you alone can succeed in this task. You have strength, courage and intelligence and on you I rely to take up and discharge this responsibility of discovering Sita. Rama too felt that Hanuman's efforts would be crowned with success. Whatever obstacles turned up, he felt that Hanuman would find a way of overcoming them. He gave his signet ring to Hanuman and said, Take this ring. I am full of hope that you will discover Sita. This ring will tell her that you are my messenger. Dear Hanuman, may you bring Sita and me together again. Readers should realize the solemnity and pathos of the scene. Rama, full of abiding trust in the devoted loyalty and valor of Hanuman, placed the ring as though it was his own hungry heart in his servant's hand. The ideal servant accepted the sacred trust with a deep reverence and an unshakable resolve never to fail his master. Sugriva gave orders to his army. Sita must anyhow be discovered. No matter where she is hidden, you can and must find her. Within a month, you must return with news of her. And the army swarmed out like ants from an ant hill and spread in the four directions. Satabali and his army proceeded northwards. Vinata went east. Sushena westwards. Hanuman, Angada and the general Tara, Tara travelled south, southwards. All were equally enthusiastic and equally eager to catch and kill Ravana and redeem Sita. Each group was anxious to be first to return with success. There was tumultuous rivalry. Rama inquired of Sugriva, You describe every quarter and region of the earth like one who has seen the whole world with his own eyes. How and when did you see it all? You will remember, my lord, said Sugriva, how Wali pursued me in all directions. Wherever I went, he still pursued me. And so I had to wander over the face of the whole world. I thus had occasion to see every part of this planet. Later, I learnt about the spot where Rishi Matanga had built his ashrama. If Wali entered that region, his head would go to pieces by the sage's curse. I knew that he would not come to that place and could not harm me even if he came. So there I lay protected. The hordes that went north, east and west returned in a month and reported that Sita was not to be found anywhere. Carefully we searched forests, mountains, rivers and cities, but nowhere could we found her, find her. Hanuman, who had gone southwards, is the lucky one. Did not the Rakshasa carrying Sita also travel southwards? And uh, Hanuman has not yet returned. Rama, hearing this, was satisfied that the Vanaras had done their best. Hanuman and Angada entered and searched the caves and forests of the Vindhyas. Then they came upon a desert where a Rishi was performing tapas. By his curse, it was devoid of trees and plants, of birds and bees. Travelling further south, they saw a big asura. 
the cruel one regarding the vanara crowd as a good meal sprang up to catch them they thought at first that this was no other than ravana angada rushed towards him and gave him a mighty blow unable to stand it the asura spat blood and fell on the earth and lay dead like a great hill rejoicing in the thought that ravana was dead the vanara searched the forest for sita but there was no sign of her and so they carried the search elsewhere often they would weary of their fruitless search and sit down in blank despair at such times angada ganda madana and the or some other leader would encourage them and make them resume the search many days were spent in this way yet sita was not to be seen and they dreaded sugriva's dis- displeasure very far they travel southwards in their search passing through a desert fainting with hunger and thirst they saw a cave from which issued a variety of birds full of uh, the f- joy of life the gentle breeze which came out of it covered them with the pollen of the lotus flowers and filled them with fragrance the vanaras concluded undoubtedly there was water where the birds and perfume came from and the vanaras forming a chain with linked hands plunged cautiously into the dense darkness of the cave with hearts full of hope though too parched with thirst even to shout at long last all of a sudden light appeared and they saw a lovely grove with streams of pellucid water and trees bowing under their wealth of fruit then they came to a city with streets paved with jewels set in gold and great palaces beautiful as a dream they went along and then they saw an aged tapaswini clad in the garments of a recluse and seated on a dark skin the vanara trembled before the divine splendor of her face hanuman took courage to approach her bowing low before her he said salutations to you mother may we know who you are thirsty and tired we entered the dark cave hoping for some water and now that we see this unpeopled golden city with the trees and tanks we are afraid lest this be a vain vision arising from the madness of two great sufferings explain all this to us and remove our fears she answered how did you find your way into this cave you will have plenty of fruits and drink here this play- palace was built by maya <clears throat> the maya the architect of the uh, danavas he learned the art from sukracharya long and happily did maya live here till he incurred the enmity of indra who slew him later indra gave this golden palace to hema my friend these buildings and parks are hers at present she has gone to the abode of the gods but what is your purpose in coming here why did you weary yourselves wandering in the forest first eat drink and refresh yourselves and then tell me all about yourselves they ate and drank and refreshed themselves and were happy then hanuman explained to the ascetic the purpose of their wandering rama son of emperor dasharatha for some reason left his kingdom and lived in the forest with his brother and wife then a rakshasa carried off sita the wife of rama the two went out searching for her they made the acquaintance of sugriva the vanara king and became friends with him he has sent us on this mission to search for sita and find her for rama our king fixed a time limit for us to return with the clue we lost our way in the darkness of this cave and the period is now over now we do not know what to do sugriva is a strict master for failure to do his bidding within the time set he is sure to visit us with the penalty of death swayam prabha that was the name of the ascetic woman said alas you cannot by yourselves go out of this cave no stranger who enters it can go out of it with life but yours is a great mission and i must by my tapasya transport you out now shut your eyes accordingly they shut their eyes all at once they found themselves on the seashore 
reaching the seashore they looked round and they were start led to discover that it was the beginning of spring angada lamented alas the time set has been transgressed if we return to kishkinda without any clue about sita the king will surely punish us with death he hates me it was under pressure from rama that he agreed to make me yuvraja not because of love for me instead of going there and losing our lives let us fast and seek death here and now many of his companions agreed with angata the uh, vanara general tara said i do not agree <clears throat> why should we end our lives let us return to the cave of the tapasvini swayamprabha and live there happily there is everything in plenty there neither sugriva nor anyone else can reach this spot we shall spend the rest of our lives free from care but hanuman said what unworthy talk is this what pleasure is there in eating drinking and sleeping in the cave leaving our families in far away kishkinda sugriva is a good king whom we need not fear and if indeed sugriva is angry with us and determined to punish us how can this cave give us safety can it stand against lakshmana's rage will he not smash it to pieces and kill us I see no benefit in Tara's counsel. Let us return and tell Sugriva the whole truth and beg for his forgiveness. This is the only way to safety. I do not agree with Hanuman," said Angada. "Sugriva has no love or pity for me. He is sure to kill me. He is of a cruel nature. Remember how he killed my father. He does not want me to live. He will find some excuse or other for killing me. He regards me as an obstacle in his way and that of his progeny who but for me would inherit Kishkinda to break a promise is nothing to him did he not forget his solemn pledge to Rama that he would search for and recover Sita was it not only for uh, only for fear of Lakshmana and his bow that he sent us in this on this search my poor bereaved mother has succumbed to uh, to fear and accepted sugriva's protection she clings to life for my sake hearing that i am dead she will end her life alas i am miserable and know not what to do my death is certain he said again if i return to kishkinda it's far better to fast to death here he spread on the ground the kusha grass in the manner prescribed for the vow of death bowed to the gods and the dead and sat facing east determined to die when angada and yuvraja the yuvraja took this vow and sat in the posture of a fast and to death the other vanaras cried in grief and resolving also to fast with him and die sat facing east from a neighboring hill sampati the vulture king saw this crowd of vanaras resigning themselves to fate having lost his wings and being unable to move sampati had been famishing for a long time he now rejoiced saying to himself so many monkeys are going to die here together i shall have enough food for a long while without effort meanwhile the vanaras expecting death we are recalling the past and talking to one another and loudly lamenting over all that had happened because of kaikeyi dashratha died they said because of dashratha rama had to dwell in the forest ravana carried off sita the heroic jatayu lost his life in the attempt to save sita if the heroic bird had strength enough to continue the struggle a little longer Rama and Lakshmana would have arrived on the spot and recovered Sita. By fate, did all these things happen? And the end of the tale is that we are dying here. In what curious ways does fate work? Listening to these lamentations, Sampati stared at the mention of Jatayu, who was his brother. Hearing him spoken of as dead, he naturally wished to hear the whole story. Sampati was very old he and Jatayu were the children of Aruna the god of dawn and brother of Garuda Hari's vehicle Jatayu and Sampati in their youth competed with each other as to who could fly higher and rose in the sky as they approached the sun and the, the heat became intolerable and Jatayu was about to be burnt up 
But Sampati spread his wings and protected his brother from the fury of the sun. Jatayu was saved, but Sampati's wings were burnt off. Unable to fly, he fell down on a hill. Since then, he could not move, but stayed in the same place, ever hungry for meal and just alive. Who brings sad news of my dear brother Jatayu? He cried in agony. O oh, Vanaras, his beloved Jatayu, dead indeed? Why did Rama, son of the King Dasharatha, go to the forest? Why did he lose his wife? Was Jatayu killed by Ravana? Tell me all. The Vanaras had resolved to end their lives. The wingless old vulture had desired to make an easy meal of them. But now things turned out otherwise. The Vanaras got up, went to Sampati and gently led him down from the hill. Then they talked and exchanged information. Sampati recounted his story. Angada related all that had happened in Kishkinta and asked old Sampati how Rama could be helped. Sampati was old and weak, but his eyes had not lost their keenness. He could see things very far off. He could see Sita captive in Lanka and described in detail the wealth of Ravana's kingdom. He saw and described how Sita sat surrounded by Rakshasis in Lanka. The Vanaras were wild with joy. They jumped about saying, Now we all know all about Sita. There is no need for us to die. Rama's purpose will be achieved. Sampati's troubles were also over. The boon he had received that when he helped Rama, he would get back his wings came true. And even as they were talking, young feathers began to spring and grow on his sides. Sampati now shone with fresh beauty and he found satisfaction in performing the funeral obsequies of Jatayu.